Here another chapter in our lecture series about programming with MATLAB and Octave. It's about loops with for and while. So let's just get started. Um, look at the following problem. Let's say the, uh, you are asked to calculate the sum of the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And it's a good start always to um, spell that out in plain language, English, German or whatever. So you could say it's uh, the following would do the job. Start with some, some um, variable, let's call it sum, to be zero. Then take some index, ramp that up from one uh, in steps of one to six. And for each of these values, add this value, the index, to the sum. And then at the end, return sum. So let's try to translate this um, task into MATLAB or Octave. Okay, so we just start writing a program. Um, and I already started MATLAB, the simple screen we looked at in the last chapter that um, he is just the um, command window and we would like to write a program. So let's do that by starting the editor. Either type in your program, whatever you want, basically, or um, store the file beforehand, uh, give it a name. So we just do that, save it. And chapter two, let's call it program two. Okay. The task is, we just translate that first sentence, sum equals zero. Start with index equals zero. And then we need to uh, increase the index in steps of one until it is six. And that's where the uh, for loop starts. So the definition is for, have a um, look at the color, it actually changes from black to blue as soon as you type in the for, indicating that it's um, a, a, the structure um, of the loop. And the notation is go until you've reached six. And to indicate that, there's a double point separating the starting value and the end value. The standard is that it's the step size of one. Here another note, a comment you indicate by this percentage sign and ever, uh, whenever you type that in, uh, the comment is highlighted in green color. So we, I could just um, write that down, starting from one in step one um, up to six. Okay, that's the definition. You need to know how the for loop operates. Um, the standard step is one. That's what you need to know as well. Now, you in the next step, you need to add this index to sum. And store that in the old variable sum again. That is sum equals sum plus index. Remember in basically all programming languages, the right hand side is telling you what to do and the left hand side of the equal sign is telling you where the stuff is stored. So sum plus index is calculated and then stored again where uh, to the variable sum. Right, and basically that's it. You just need to close the for loop by an end, which 
you might have noticed, appears in blue color again, indicating that the for loop is terminated. So um, the color is indicating that as well as the uh, this sign here, this little um, graphical, graphical thing. Okay, and more or less that's it. You can just output the calculated sum at the end. And that should run. Okay, so if you like, just calculate this stuff in your uh, head and uh, figure out whether the sum is right. Let's have a look at um, the output here. Program 2 has been started by pressing the green button. Then the output of sum is showing up here a few times. And that is because here this summation, this statement, where Um, the for loop is actually um, uh, doing something, uh, the output is always um, given to the screen, the sum changed. If you would like to suppress the output, just write a semicolon at the end of a line. Semicolon, I just write that down, that I that I and you don't forget, a semicolon in the uh, suppresses output. It suppresses the output, not the calculation. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's the for loop. Perhaps here another semicolon to suppress the sum at the big, um, beginning. Okay. If you start it now, then just the whole thing is done um, in the end and uh, the sum given. More or less, that's all you need to know about the structure of the um, for loop. Let's have a look uh, whether you can modify this structure somewhat, uh, um, somewhat in case the task is different. Let's say the example is at the number starting from 3.1 up to 19 in steps of 2.5. How do we write that? Let's try that out. We just take a different sum, let's call it sum 1. More or less we just need to change the for loop, basically the starting value from 3.1 up to 19. There's one thing missing this step size of 2.5 and that is stated in between starting and end value. Again with this double point. And all the other stuff stays the same. Okay, I haven't used index, I called it i and i. And in this case you get a different number and uh, in case I haven't written something wrong it should give the right result. So it's always starting value, step size, end value. You could modify that <coughs> and take variables instead of printing the numbers. Start, step and end is 19. That is here you would just type in step, uh, start, step and end value or variable and the result is the same. Again you could just make it look a bit nicer by suppressing the output. But that doesn't change um, anything in the values actually calculated. 
right. Okay, that's more or less all you need to know about the for loop and then you need some practice trying out uh, that it does work and that it um, just comes naturally and especially this thinking translation from the language, our natural language to this programming language. Okay, uh, let's step to the while loop. Another example. Um, let's say we have the task um, again to calculate the sum, where the sum is starting um, with the value 2.5. You add in each step, step 17.3 and it goes up until the sum is 200. Would you know how often you need to run this loop? Probably not without actually calculating. At least I wouldn't uh, know uh, directly. I, um, so in this case, it's better not to use the for loop, but a while loop, indicating that the smaller than 200 is a comparison where you're just um, telling the program to interrupt the execution of the loop. The as long as you could translate to until. So we don't know how often the loop needs to run. And that is not practical in for loops and therefore we try it out uh, with a while loop. And the structure is here. Sum equals 2.5, that's the starting value. The step size is 17.3. And now the while loop has its structure again, starting with a while. You do the comparison as long or until um, the sum is larger than 200 or as long as the sum is smaller than um, 200. You are asked to do the um, summation. Again, the while loop is uh, ends with an end. Okay, try that out and look at, at um, a few pitfalls here and I'll type that in as well. Here again, um, short note, uh, program two, that was a for loop, if you would like to write another program, just press, uh, press the plus button here. Again, untitled two appears, just um, a name holder for um, which we won't use. Um, it's better to actually write a proper name. Let's call it proc3.m. Okay, let's try again to write that down. Sum equals 2.5. Step size is 17.3 while sum smaller than 200. Sum equals sum uh, plus step while. Here's one thing I would like to um, uh, not while it's end. There's one thing which I would like to point out to you. If you type in the end, the D, MATLAB shifts this end automatically to get this structure that the while and the end have the same uh, outline and the, um, uh, the line 4 is somewhat shifted um, to the right. That's quite neat and please try right from the beginning to keep this structure and to keep it clear and uh, smooth that you don't get confused with one while or um, one for loop it's no problem but as soon as you have many um, loops stacked um, uh, into it, each other um, then it gets a bit messy and um, confusing. So uh, keeping it clean 
might help. So let's see whether the thing uh, runs and what it is giving. 210.1. Okay, I couldn't calculate that in my head, or at least I would need some time. So let's have a look at a few pitfalls here. Uh, let's say ah, we got this, uh, for instance, uh, the comparison wrong. Let's say as long as the sum is larger than 200, uh, do the calculation. Then the loop would never be entered. So nothing is done. So it's pretty important to get this comparison right. Here in the box are listed all possible um, symbols for this comparison. So the description less than less or equal to greater than greater than or equal equal to or not equal to. As in all programming languages or basically all, the equal is indicated by the double equal sign. So it's a logical expression or a comparison. And that we need to keep in mind. It, it's asking for trouble if you don't pay attention to that. Right, there's one other thing I would like um, to point out. For instance, you forgot to um, include the increase, the step size. So sum is always sum. What will happen if you do that? Run the button, the press the run button, and you will notice that the whole thing is just not terminating. The, and you can spot that here. It's a busy little busy sign down here and a pause button appears here. The problem is that the sum never changes, so it's always smaller 200 and therefore the loop just continues to run. So you have to break it, you have to interrupt, basically get out of the loop. You can do that by either pressing the pause button here and then quit, quit the programming and then the standard sign here the double um, uh, greater than sign appears or I just did run it again on your keyboard press the control C um, thing but you need to move with your mouse into the command window and then interruption is with um, a, a control or string C. Try it out yourself. It's quite common with while loop that you um, get your comparison wrong, basically um, cre create infinite uh, loops. The comparison or the logical expression here um, you need to get used to and that is usually not done in a lecture, but rather than trying it out in exercises. So um, try yourself. Okay, the comparison between for and while loop. Um, usually it's the for loop is easier. You don't can mess up as many things with the logical expression. So uh, the advice is better use for loops when possible. It's a structure is a bit simpler. While loops are, for the reasons I just stated, a bit more complicated uh, with uh, the logical expressions asking for yeah, amendments sometimes, or uh, there are just um, errors in there. Uh, and especially when the logic uh, is a bit more uh, complicated, watch out for infinite loops. So always better style is try 
to use for loop if possible. The last example with the uh, summation where we used the while loop, you could um, adjust to use the for loop instead of the while loop. Try that out yourself. Okay, that's more or less it about for and while loops. Um, try it out yourself and then you will succeed. See you.